NLAEA's Beacon of Justice Awards honor members of the pro bono legal community who are tireless advocates for equal justice. Each year, the awards highlight one area of pro bono work that aligns with NLADA's mission of equal access to justice. The 2024 awards feature law firms who are addressing issues related to civil and human rights. Congratulations to all of this year's winning firms. The award highlights work that focuses on the protection from discrimination, injustice, and inequality on the national and global level. So the 2012 Miller versus Alabama Supreme Court ruling was a pivotal ruling with respect to juvenile sentencing, which the Supreme Court for the first time said that sentencing juveniles to life without parole was unconstitutional. In 2016, that holding was made retroactive by Montgomery versus Louisiana. There was this opportunity for so many individuals who had been incarcerated since they were juveniles to be heard and have their sentence possibly changed, but it would be really difficult to do that without an attorney and without legal help. We were connected with the Louisiana Center for Children's Rights in 2020. And they came to us with Davion's case and a few others, and they said, these are cases where we really need help. What can you do? Davion was sentenced to life without parole when he was only 19 years old. It was a robbery and death of an elderly woman. Five people were arrested. Davion is incarcerated at the Louisiana State Penitentiary. Yeah, Angolan's notorious as being one of the worst of the worst prisons in the country. It's a place often without hope. You become institutionalized, particularly when you are incarcerated at such a young period in your life. Davion is very kind, he's very considerate. It's, it's heartbreaking to get to know Davion and his family and know all of the years that they have missed having together. This is someone who firmly believes and has maintained that he was not involved in this crime whatsoever. And so I think he was happy for the assistance, uh, but I think he was skeptical that there might be you know, some palatable results from that. Uh, we started to uncover a lot of things about Davion's case that were really supportive of his claim of innocence. We found evidence that the state had withheld from Davion's trial counsel that would have been material to his defense. We wrote to the district attorney and we told them of this evidence and we told them that we thought the discovery of this evidence would have a material impact on the resentencing proceedings and potentially undermine the entire conviction. And they agreed that they would agree to a sentence of life with parole. We felt like there was more to be done. We filed a motion for Davion to receive a new trial based on the withholding of this material evidence. She did grant our application for post-conviction relief, um, effectively ordering Davion a new trial. Finally, having a judge believe him and hear him was something that just meant so much to him and to all of us. So my hope is that someone else can look at Davion's case and say, something like that was withheld in my case and it should have been produced and get the same relief that Davion has been able to get. On behalf of Baker Hostetler, I would like to thank the National Legal Aid and Defender Association for this year's Beacon of Justice Award. At Baker Hostetler, pro bono work is a critical part of our culture and our everyday practice. I'd like to take just a minute to talk about one of my cases on behalf of a young man named Jaskira Singh, who came to me through our relationship with the Sikh American Veterans Alliance, or SEVA. SEVA's mission is to promote the service of Sikh Americans in the United States military. Jaskarit wanted to join the United States Marine Corps. Unfortunately, he faced a barrier to entry. That is, the Marine Corps would not allow him to serve while wearing a turban and having long hair and an unshorn beard. We began our representation in August of 2021, seeking a religious accommodation, which we submitted in November of 2021. The Marine Corps partially denied that request by February of 2022, stating that Jaskarit could serve in the Marine Corps with a turban and unshorn beard and hair only if he completed boot camp and only if he attended boot camp by cutting his hair 
shaving his beard, and not wearing a turban. In April of 2022, we brought suit in federal court in Washington, D.C., along with our litigation partners at the law firm of Winston & Strawn, Beckett Law, and the C Coalition. Our suit was premised on violations of the First Amendment and the Religious Freedom Restoration Act. We sought a preliminary injunction that would allow just Garrett and two other recruits to commence training at boot camp with the Marine Corps without having to sacrifice their religious faith and tenets. The district court denied our preliminary injunction and we sought an immediate appeal to the DC Circuit Court of Appeals. In December of 2022, the circuit court granted our preliminary injunction, finding that our clients were suffering and will continue to suffer grave, immediate, and ongoing injuries to the exercise of their faith. In August of 2023, I had the privilege of attending Jessica's graduation from San Diego Marine Corps boot camp. He was the first fully accommodated Sikh American to join the United States Marines. I want to thank Baker Hostetler, Seba, Winston and Strawn, Beckett Law, and the Sikh Coalition for their tireless advocacy that brought about this historic achievement. I also want to thank former Baker Associate Matt Coward and current Baker Associate Deirdre Farrell for all their hard work in representing Just Care. Thank you again. From two until roughly about 15, I hopped from different group homes and foster homes. At 15, I was placed back with my mother, but unfortunately it wasn't at the right time. And from there, trying to find stability with myself, I ran away from home. I was homeless and I, I needed help. The very first time that I did become homeless, and I didn't really know the system too well. I thought you had to take care of everything on your own. And it has been like a little difficult in the past with trying to figure that out. One of the things that has really amazed us about making the Homeless Youth Handbook come to life is to be able to work with entities that share our commitment to making the world a better place. The handbook is absolutely amazing. I wish it was available when I was younger. It would have been a lot easier for me. I think that it's going to help youth because it helps them identify what's available. The legal barriers that they're facing are what's hindering them from being stable. To make the handbook more accessible, we have a couple features on the website in particular. We created word clouds for each chapter. The other way is to have a really robust search functionality. They can easily search and find that information. This work is driven by my desire to help someone else and not see another youth go through the struggles that I went through. If there is access to anything that can help their journey just a little bit, I want to make sure that I'm connecting them to it. Pro bono is a priority at Beverage and Diamond. Over half of all B&D attorneys, both principals and associates, participate in the firm's pro bono efforts. B&D undertakes a variety of pro bono work, ranging from amicus briefs on racial justice and the rule of law, immigration and refugee support, to landlord-tenant issues and criminal clemency cases. The firm also supports organizations that engage in projects concerning civil justice reform, such as the Council for Court Excellence. I think one thing that has been really wonderful about my pro bono experience here is that it doesn't have to be these big monumental cases. We have taken very small cases, something just preserving the dignity and depth of somebody who wants to make sure that their property is disposed of in accordance with their wishes, all the way up to a 13th Amendment case against the United States. I, I think all of our pro bono work really has kind of this human rights human dignity aspect to it. And we are very fortunate to have relationships that allow us to 
provide opportunities to our attorneys to help out in, in ways, I don't even want to say large and small, but with varying time commitments. We're trying to erase the badges of slavery for rightful members of the Muscogee Nation. These people have been guaranteed citizenship by a treaty duly ratified by the United States and the Muscogee Nation. That treaty remains the supreme law of the land as far as we're concerned. And we are seeking to get a court to agree with us and reestablish citizenship for our client and for other descendants of formerly enslaved people. I went to law school being told that very few people get to practice constitutional law. And here I am practicing constitutional law. Very few people get to bring 13th Amendment claims. Here I am bringing a 13th Amendment claim, all thanks to the commitment to pro bono that Beverage and Diamond has made and to the wonderful clients that I've had a chance to meet and work with and who have entrusted me and my firm with this extremely important case. For 200 years, the town of Federalsburg, Maryland had never had a black elected official due to the town's at-large election system, which diminished and diluted the influence of the black vote. In 2023, Kroll and the ACLU of Maryland filed a Voting Rights Act lawsuit in federal court in Maryland on behalf of black residents, the Carolyn County branch of the NAACP, and the caucus of African-American leaders challenging the election system as racially discriminatory. They asked me, what would representation on the town council, how much would, what would that mean to me? And I took a deep breath and I said, you know, I think it would make my grandparents proud. Choking back tears. I said, and it would make my grandparents proud. It would make my mother proud. It would, it will make my children proud and my grandchildren to come. In September, 2023, the town under a new election system elected not one, but two black council members. That is more people that has ever voted wow. in the town's history. So wow. we as a whole did that. In what would be a historic voter turnout in a federal spring election, two black women, Marlene Hammond and Brady James were elected to the town council for the first time ever. Freedom Now is an organization based here in Washington, D.C. that's uh, dedicated to protecting individuals and communities from government repression around the world. Uh, they defend human rights through direct legal support, uh, working in front of international tribunals, uh, and also just targeting uh, government laws that seek to oppress either individuals or communities as a whole. They use not only a, a legal advocacy, but they also use political uh, support and motivating allies in other countries as well. Uh, and altogether, it's a holistic approach to ending government repression around the world. And that's why this work is really important. It allows us to amplify their voices in a way in which others aren't doing. And we've been privileged to help Freedom Now do that on behalf of prisoners of conscience for over a decade. We've also been able to serve Freedom Now as a force multiplier for their work, allowing them to use a small staff and use our international team to take on campaigns that they otherwise wouldn't be able to take on, which means that not only do we have the ability to impact cases and jurisdictions all around the world, but it also means that we're able to go deeper for the clients that we do take on. Many thanks to NLADA for recognizing Deckert this year uh, with this wonderful award. I'm delighted that in the more than a decade that Deckert has been working with Freedom Now, I think we've had easily more than 100 people working as part of what I would consider a signature relationship for our firm. And I think we've dedicated nearly 20,000 hours to uh, a wide range of matters for Freedom Now working with their clients, uh, standing up for human rights in many parts of the world where sadly not enough people are standing up for human rights. So we're very proud to be a part of the Freedom Now world and honored to have received this award.
Hi, everybody. My name is Ben Weinberg. I am the Pro Bono Partner at Dentons. It is our absolute thrill to accept the Beacon of Justice Award from NLADA. Thank you so much to NLADA and to the magnificent people, Fraser Kamara, and her entire team. Last year, we were thrilled to host the inaugural NLADA DEI uh, Summit, and we're very much looking forward to hosting the second summit later this year. But what I really want to do with this time is to, um, to show gratitude to and to thank the organizations, many of which are members of NLADA, who really are indispensable to our civil and human rights pro bono work. They're the ones that are providing the cases to us, they mentor us, they, they teach us, and they co-counsel with us. So without further ado, here's the list of the uh, magnificent organizations that have helped us. Thank you to the Brooklyn Defender Services. Thank you to Equip for Equality. Thank you. Thank you to Uptown People's Law Center. Thank you to the Center for Justice and Accountability. Thank you to Chicago Beyond. And thank you to Legal Aid Chicago. Congratulations to the other firms doing this important work who also are being recognized. And thank you again to NLADA. the great privilege of working on all three of the Afghan pro bono projects with Dorsey and Whitney. And the one that has been probably the most challenging, but also the most rewarding has been the humanitarian parole project for the public defender's office. And the first family that I started helping with, uh, we received conditional approvals and eight of the nine family members actually have arrived in the United States and they chose to come to Iowa where I live and work. The ninth family member just had some more progress on, on his application and so we are very hopeful that he too will be coming to Iowa uh, before much longer. Uh, my team was assigned a uh, client uh, in the beginning of the summer of 2023. We learned that this individual had worked in the Afghan military closely side by side with American soldiers uh, in fighting the Taliban and that when the U.S. military pulled out in August of 2021, he was forced to evacuate um, for fear that his previous work with the Americans would make him a target for uh, the Taliban. Uh, not only did he have to leave his life behind, he also left his family behind. Uh, his wife and five children still remain in the country. And the next step in our in our process is to try to successfully bring them over here as well. Uh, one of his children was actually born a few months after he evacuated Afghanistan. So he, he hasn't even met his youngest child, which is pretty heartbreaking. And we just found out last week that his asylum application was actually granted, which is incredibly exciting. And it was one of the most thrilling moments I've had as a lawyer to be able to call him and, and tell him that it was approved. And it was our work together that really made this project successful and also impactful. And, and that was really special. And, and it emphasizes uh, the true meaning of, of pro bono. Um, you know, we often think of pro bono as just, just that pro bono, uh, but it means it's actually short for pro bono publico. And what that means um, is for the public good. And so when you think of it in that way, it's, it's not just an individual lawyer helping an individual client for free, but it's for the public good, for more than just an individual uh, client. Um, and although we helped many individual Afghan nationals that day uh, apply for and obtain asylum, the thing that really stood out in addition to the great feelings that all those Afghan nationals had of being able to find a home here in the United States and here in Iowa, um, it was that we all worked together to make this happen. And that was the real pro bono publico uh, benefit uh, that we saw in action uh, here in Des Moines, Iowa. So on behalf of Dorsey's Des Moines office, I want to thank you uh, for including us in this Beacon of Justice Award. Thanks. On behalf of all of our attorneys who participate in the pro bono program in New York and Washington, D.C., thank you, NLADA, for this recognition, and congratulations to our fellow Beacon of Justice honorees. Freed Frank is proud of our history of pro bono work. 
At the heart of these efforts is a commitment to advocating for low-income individuals and communities of color navigating legal, immigration, and other racially discriminatory systems. Throughout 2023, Freed Frank strategically partnered with 18 legal services organizations engaging in diverse pro bono initiatives, such as transgender name change clinics, homelessness prevention helplines, emergency immigration applications, criminal record expungement clinics, amicus briefs to protect reproductive rights, and obtaining temporary and permanent civil protective orders. And now I'll turn it over to a few of my colleagues to tell you more. I'm especially pleased that we're receiving a Beacon of Justice Award in a year that NLADA is recognizing contributions to civil and human rights. As some of you know, Freed Frank has a long history of pro bono work in the immigration space. While we don't have a billable immigration practice, a mainstay of our pro bono program for decades has been seeking protection for those fleeing persecution in their home countries. We've obtained asylum for dozens of people from around the world, both in removal proceedings and before USCIS. They've included political activists, religious minorities, domestic violence victims, indigenous persons, and members of the LGBTQ community, among others. In addition to asylum, our practice has grown to include representation of victims of trafficking or other serious crimes. Whenever possible, we've assisted our clients with family reunification, green cards, and ultimately in obtaining their U.S. citizenship. Since the fall of Kabul in August 2021, we've been honored to represent the International Association of Women Judges in its efforts to help Afghan women judges escape Taliban rule and relocate to the United States or other safe third countries. Our role in this effort has been to advise the IAWJ about U.S. refugee law, to submit referrals on behalf of IAWJ to the U.S. Refugee Admissions Program, to assist in the preparation of IAWJ's communications about the process with impacted judges, and to interact with U.S. government officials about IAWJ's specific concerns. Although we did not represent the individual judges in this process, we've been thrilled to play a role in helping them reach safety and continue to celebrate the arrival of each individual judge and her family members as they complete the difficult resettlement process. One of the pro bono projects that I am most proud of is our commitment over the past 18 months to support a name change clinic with the Ali Forney Center here in New York City. The majority of our name change clinic clients are transgender, non-binary, or gender non-conforming. Most of our clients are unhoused and have escaped dangerous and abusive situations to come to New York City to live life as their true authentic selves. Being able to be a part of their journey by helping them change their name legally is an honor and a privilege. Thank you again for recognizing all of our pro bono attorneys who have worked on this project and other pro bono projects here at the firm. A number of lawyers at Freed Frank, including myself, have been lucky enough to work with DC Volunteer Lawyers Project, taking on civil protection orders and other direct representation cases for victims of domestic violence and their children. We've had a tremendous history of success with these cases, but one case this year really stands out. We were able to convince this, the court to approve an extraordinary 10-year extension of our client's civil protection order. For perspective, the customary time period for a CPO extension in DC is only two years. As a result of this success, our client's abuser will be prohibited from communicating with her or her daughter and critically from possessing a gun for the next decade. As you can imagine, this was an emotional and challenging yet meaningful case to work on. And I think it's emblematic of the kind of impact that groups like NLADA, legal aid and defense attorneys can have on marginalized clients. I wanna thank groups like the NLADA for continuing to support this incredibly important work. And I call upon other lawyers and legal professionals to engage in pro bono cases.
having the opportunity to represent a client who feared for their life, was seeking safety and asylum in the U.S., who obtained that and then was able to be reunited with his wife and three really small children who were um, in Pakistan also having fled Afghanistan while his asylum application was pending was just the most the most rewarding thing I've been able to do as an attorney and I am so thankful to be part of an organization that cares so deeply about human rights and um, creating opportunities for us to partner with great nonprofits to provide legal representation to defend human rights for um, people who otherwise wouldn't be able to have legal representation. Christopher Spates was an inmate in the Missouri Department of Corrections, and he and another inmate had a fight. He was put in a new cell, and sometime later, the guards presented with a proposed new cellmate in that new cell, and it was the guy that he had just had the fight with. Christopher was made to be cuffed behind his back. The other inmate was put into the cell, was uncuffed, and that inmate viciously attacked Chris for a full 60 to 90 seconds uh, before the guards intervened by dousing Chris with pepper mace in order to stop the fight. The entire time his hands were cuffed behind his back, he could not defend himself. Here at Hush Blackwell, taking on pro bono civil rights cases is hugely important to, to the mission, to the pro bono service that we believe is important. And in terms of the constitutional cases, the civil rights cases like this, we really believe that the Constitution has to work for everyone or it doesn't work for anyone. And that sounds maybe kind of cliche or like kind of a platitude, but it really is true. The equal protection of the law under the Constitution is paramount the bedrock to the kinds of, of civil rights pro bono work that we try to do here at Hush Black. The program started because of Jenna's connection with the Jewish Vocational Services, who had received 150 families from Afghanistan, but didn't have legal services to help them stay in the country, to find the immigration status they needed to stay in the country. So Jenna and I looked at this project and said, hey, we can help individuals who had been evacuated out of Afghanistan when the Taliban took over. And what we did was apply for asylum on their behalf so that they can live safely in this country. We filed just under 30 applications for asylum and some of those were individuals, but a lot were families, spouses, kids. And so far, everyone we've applied for has been granted. We have 15 grants as of today. And when I reached out to Margaret Richards, our head of pro bono, um, she enthusiastically said yes, and the firm was so supportive of our efforts. In the end, we ended up utilizing over 20 summer associates, a ton of attorneys, paralegals, time and effort um, for this project, which obviously didn't generate any money for the firm, but allowed us to do good for society and to develop skills as attorneys. So I'm really thankful to the firm for the support that they provided us. The firm has a long history of uh, fighting for LGBTQ rights, uh, going back at least as far as Lawrence v. Texas. In this lawsuit, we represent a drag performer named Mitski Avalo, and she has an organization called Southern Utah Drag Stars, which organizes drag shows in Utah. And she was denied a permit to hold an event uh, by the city of St. George. We were able to uh, obtain a preliminary injunction from the judge who wrote a 60 page opinion uh, that really had some rousing rhetoric about the importance of First Amendment rights. And our client was able to hold her event in late June and it was by all accounts a success. So this was a significant case in the context of the current political climate. There are a lot of states and municipalities that are trying to ban drag performances and it's part of a larger uh, assault on the rights of trans people and LGBTQ people. Jenner and Block is partnering with ACL National, ACLU of Oklahoma, as well as Lambda Legal to challenge a ban on gender affirming care for transgender adolescents. We were successful initially in getting the state defendants to agree to a stay of enforcement of the ban while our motion for preliminary injunction was pending. Unfortunately, the court in Oklahoma recently denied our motion for a preliminary injunction. We are appealing that decision to the Court of Appeals for the Tenth Circuit. The significance of this case is that this ban, along with other bans uh, throughout the country that are being enacted with increasing frequency, are depriving transgender adolescents of necessary medical care 
it's care that is evidence-based and that medical experts have agreed improves the lives of transgender adolescents. And so we are seeking to require that parents be able to make medical decisions for their children and for them to allow to have access to this care. Kane Spalding is committed to assisting clients with complex human and civil rights work because righting the wrongs that these clients have suffered affects us all. For us, civil and human rights um, is fundamental. For those of us who have had been able to obtain an education like we have, to be able to practice at the highest levels of the law, it's incumbent upon all of us to think about what we can do for our community. The first important matter that I had the opportunity to work on relates to a lawsuit that was brought against the city of Mountain View for an RV ban that it passed, which would have displaced hundreds of individuals who are most vulnerable in that community. What we were able to do is bring suit, which led to a positive settlement um, where the city of Mountain View dedicated three miles of parking for um, our, our clients in this community. Another example, in partnership with the Impact Fund and Legal Aid at Work, we brought a class action on behalf of LGBTQ veterans asserting constitutional claims, equal protection and due process violations against the Department of Defense for issuing and maintaining discharge paperwork that contains discriminatory indicators of veterans' sexual orientation. In connection with these discriminatory discharges, many veterans were issued less than honorable discharges, which makes them ineligible to access life-changing benefits like health care, home loans, and educational benefits. We're hoping for revision of the discharge paperwork for these class members. They should be issued new discharge paperwork with sexual orientation indicators removed. It's really that simple. Another matter um, that I and my teams had the opportunity to work on involves um, a lawsuit that was brought on behalf of a Vietnamese elderly man named An Le. He was walking along um, San Francisco Chinatown and he was beaten um, badly. Unfortunately, his case was not prosecuted and he didn't even know uh, that a plea deal was had. This lawsuit led to um, us working with the San Francisco Superior Court and now um, the judges in criminal court in San Francisco will have to ensure that victims have had the chance to come to court, um, to express their views, to provide a victim impact statement. This work is not for the faint of heart. It takes creativity and commitment. King and Spalding and its talented lawyers are eager to take on work like this for future clients. I think it was Teddy Roosevelt who said the best prize in life is the chance to work hard at work worth doing. This is worth doing. The worst thing is not to do anything. Each of us can you know, play a role, whether we're, you know, doing pro bono work, whether we're volunteering with these nonprofit organizations. If not us, then who? that inspires me the most is our people and the willingness to raise our hands and go above and beyond and really out of our way to address pressing needs in our community. You see how many people in this small community really relative to the whole world want to do something and help the people in their communities and that is it's just really inspiring even in the face of hardship.
Mintz is so proud to be receiving the Beacon of Justice Award again this year with so many deserving law firms throughout the country. We're particularly proud for the focus area this year of civil and human rights, two focus areas that Mintz has been providing pro bono legal services in for decades. The Mintz Trar Office is proud to have helped form the National GC Network, Canada's largest organization of GCs committed to advancing DEI values in the legal community. We helped the organization become a formal not-for-profit and since then have also helped build its network through recruitment and awareness activities. Today, the National GC Network has 120 GCs host an annual conference and has established an extensive internship program. The organization is making a real difference in the legal community. We are proud to play a role in its success. Since its launch nearly six years ago, the University of San Diego School of Law's Name and Gender Marker Change Clinic has helped individuals of all backgrounds whose lives had been deeply affected by the lack of legal recognition of their true genders in their identity documents. To date, with the help of Mint's attorneys and other volunteers, the student-run clinic has served about 1,100 individuals. I'm very proud to support this work, particularly because of the immediate positive impact it can have on the participants' lives. I am honored to have had the opportunity to work with Mint's on several Afghan asylum matters. I personally came from an immigrant family and it is important to me um, to be able to help other immigrants um, during difficult times. At Nelson Mullins, our national pro bono program is committed to empowering vulnerable communities and promoting equity. We have provided over 900,000 hours of pro bono service since our program's inception, including 50,000 hours just last year. In 2023, we focused on systemic reform in schools, prisons, and cities across the country. We challenged unjust prosecution and exploitation. Here are some examples. Last fall, my colleague decided that he wanted to do some pro bono appellate work. He picked an ineffective assistance of counsel case that had been certified for appeal to the Third Circuit. It had been brought by a pro se prisoner who had pled guilty to a drug offense in 2018 on the advice from his lawyer that if he did plead guilty, he would only get a year or two in prison. But instead, at his sentencing, he was given a term of federal incarceration of 10 years. Just last week, we were able to get our clients resentenced to time served. So now he gets to go back to his significant other and his children and his life years before he otherwise would have. Mrs. Grant is an elderly retired African-American woman who owns a modest home in downtown Charleston. She got preyed on by despicable individuals. He took advantage of Mrs. Grant's vulnerable status and talked her into a terrible deal where he assumed her $8,000 mortgage in exchange for the deed to her house and monthly payments totaling around $80,000. Ultimately though, justice prevailed and Mrs. Grant got her house back debt free. This was honestly one of the most fulfilling cases and victories of my legal career to date. If you ever want to be reminded of the impact that your skill and knowledge can make, just take a pro bono case where you can level a playing field right or wrong, or amplify a voice that needs it. We've been working with um, refugees from Afghanistan really since August of 2021 when the United States withdrew from the country. We were actually put in touch with three individuals who served as national police officers in Afghanistan, working shoulder to shoulder with U.S. service members. When we heard about their stories, we wanted to do everything we could to make sure that they could safely come to the United States and, and remain here. Fortunately, they were able to get to the United States on their own. Uh, but they needed asylum status to keep them from having to either return to Afghanistan or go to some other country. We represented them in their asylum cases, which were successful. And through them, we met a family of eight um, who had also managed to escape Afghanistan and come to the U.S. through Mexico. 
The, the father of the family was essentially a secret service agent for President Karzai and his successor, the presidents of Afghanistan. Uh, because of that service, he was affiliated with the United States and sort of Western democracies, so that when the Taliban took over, his life and his family's lives were very much in danger. When I had the opportunity to join this case, I immediately jumped on it because I just it'd feel very passionate about um, you know the refugees and especially from Afghanistan and the with this particular client, the work that he did in Afghanistan was so important and very brave and really put him at risk, um, him and his entire family. And in recognition of that, I was I felt honored to be a part of this. That's you know it's now it's been a years long process of you know helping different Afghan individuals. It's been a really wonderful, rewarding experience to get to know, you know, the families and, um, you know, over the course of a couple of years and we'll continue to, to represent them. The judge really didn't deliberate at all. <laughs> as soon as the evidence concluded, he went straight into the colloquy where he you know, made his findings and, and came to the conclusion that this family was entitled to asylum. And it was a very nice moment because they all started clapping. Uh, I think everybody in the courtroom, including the government and the judge, recognized how deserving this family was of protection and, and of a safe life here in the United States. The whole atmosphere is just very celebratory and very charged with excitement. It's definitely been one of the most rewarding experiences as an attorney that I've felt being in the room and having that entire family know in that moment that they could um, stay in the United States. My why is really that I think sometimes we all take for granted um, what a blessing it is to live in the United States, especially when things in our country aren't as good as we might like them to be. Uh, but people who come from other places that don't share the same freedoms and comforts that we do, um, I think understand more than anyone how important it is to be able to live in a country like this one, even when times aren't their best. And for these families um, that came through at every turn, they were just so incredibly grateful for Nixon Peabody and for our support. As the daughter of immigrants who did not have counsel representing them when they came to America, I, and I actually was there to witness my mother's naturalization process, um, it, it's definitely important to provide that kind of insight to, um, to people new to the country, new to the language, um, from a country where they might distrust the government and, and uh, official institutions, and being able to work with them and achieve these results, I think is, is very rewarding. Hi, I'm Brad Karp, the chairman of Paul Weiss. On behalf of our firm, I'm honored to accept the Beacon of Justice Award. We are deeply grateful. For nearly a century, Paul Weiss has been known for its impactful pro bono efforts to protect human and civil rights, working alongside legal aid groups and civil rights partners. Over the past year, a major focus of our pro bono work has been helping the many thousands of migrants asylum seekers, and those experiencing homelessness in New York City. This work has spanned lawyers from every practice area and every level of seniority at our firm. Last summer, facing an unprecedented wave of new arrivals from the southern border, the city and state sought to suspend the city's right to shelter law. We represented the Coalition for the Homeless in protecting that right. We've also worked with the city to launch and lead a large-scale initiative to help over 35,000 recent migrants in city shelters file their immigration applications, enabling them to get on the path to lawful employment and out of the shelter system. And we're representing the city in a landmark suit to recover the costs of care from bus companies transporting individuals to the city as part of Texas Governor Greg Abbott's plan to shift the costs of migration and force a change in national immigration policy. These projects build on our long, proud history of advancing civil and human rights. In this, we stand shoulder to shoulder
with the National Legal Aid and Defender Association to play a critical role as the national voice for legal aid services, supporting fairness and supporting justice. We are profoundly grateful for this honor and for your leadership championing legal services to those in greatest need. Thank you. I am deeply touched. Uh, we found that a lot of people didn't even know that they were on the gang database until they were arrested. That case is a perfect example um, of the work that we do within our civil rights and racial justice program. This case is really focused on a Kansas statute, which we call the, the gang statute. And the Kansas statute defines uh, what a gang member is, at least the legal definition, by the state of Kansas. The statute defines multiple criteria and says, you know, if you meet any two or any three of these criteria, you could be listed as a gang member or a gang associate. And that comes with kind of a scarlet letter, really, for a lot of people. Uh, really insinuates that you're involved in some sort of criminal activity. So you may be arrested for, you know, a, a, a crime, and the set of facts may be the exact same as, as somebody else was arrested for the same crime, but you have an enhanced sentence or an enhanced bond simply because you were designated as a gang member. We were purely seeking uh, injunctive uh, and, you know, and declaratory relief here. The reality of it is we were really fighting over trying to get uh, a new policy, a better policy put in place that would provide some of these protections. The color of clothes someone wears, the events they attend, and the people they hang out with can no longer serve as reasons to add someone to Wichita's gang list. A settlement approved today by the City Council making those changes to the Police Department's rules. 12 News reporter Sean Logging has what this means for people on that list. Sean? Rachel, constitutional and procedural protections. That is what the groups behind this lawsuit tell me this settlement will provide. Um, it was a great combination, a great collaboration, and I'm really proud of the combined team's efforts on this case, especially my show colleagues for jumping in and trying to right a serious injustice that was facing an entire community. I, I can't tell you how much it means to receive an honor like this from a longstanding institution as respected as the NLEDA. Uh, we aren't in this for awards and recognitions, but it certainly means a lot. I really appreciate her working with the Bronx Defenders on the Notice of Claim project. In the project, we assist survivors of excessive force by the police, and I found it to be truly rewarding for a lot of these survivors. They have gone through a traumatizing experience um, where they felt really alone and really scared having this excessive force by the police. So it's important to be not only an advocate for them, but a listening ear to let them know that they're not alone and to kind of give them an outlet to process what happened. Um, a Notice of Claims must be filed with the city in order to pursue a civil rights claim. So it's been a really good process because I'm not only helping to advocate for them to eventually pursue their claim, but also, um, you know, sometimes their car has been impounded or their cell phone has been broken during the altercation. And this is kind of that first step for them, you know, getting their car back and being able to go back to work and earn a living. So it's really been a good program to um, work with the clients and truly help them achieve their goals. As Tony Morrison once said, when you get these jobs that you've been so brilliantly trained for, just remember that your real job is, if you are free, you need to free somebody else. If you have some power, your job is to empower somebody else. At Skadden, that is what I strive to do. Working on civil rights pro bono is an important aspect of the firm's mission. Filing notices of claims in partnership with the Bronx Defenders is a particularly rewarding task. Last year, the firm filed nearly 150 notices, dedicating over 1,200 hours to assisting victims of excessive use of force by the police. Because filing notices of claims is the first step in filing a civil rights claim against the city, we see clients at a pivotal juncture. We're often the first people to hear their story, and we help them comply with strict requirements, like a 90-day filing deadline, in order to preserve their legal claims. We strive to make our clients feel not only supported, but understood, respected, and dignified. I'm impressed every day by the resilience of our clients, and working alongside them is not only a highlight of my day to day, but the honor of a lifetime. Hi, 
My name is Corrine Irish. I am a partner at Squire Patent Box and the head of our pro bono practice. We are truly honored to once again be recognized with the Beacon of Justice Award. Our work for civil and human rights spans many different areas, but we wanted to highlight the work that we've done over the past 20 years in the criminal justice space. And I'm going to turn it over to my colleagues to talk a little bit about some of that work. Hi, my name is Kareen Williams, and I'm an attorney with Squire Patton Boggs Public Service Initiative. Delivering excellent legal services to people who couldn't otherwise afford them is central to our firm's core values. The pro bono work that we do on behalf of people facing egregious miscarriages of justice in our criminal legal system supports our communities, uplifts dignity and respect, is innovative and inspiring, upholds the highest standards of professionalism, and if you believe in the Arthur Ashe adage, start where you are, do what you can, our work connects our clients with our capabilities. Last year, for example, we were able to put on a federal evidentiary hearing for a man currently sitting on death row to show the court that DNA testing excludes our client as a possible contributor and actually identifies someone else who is currently serving a life sentence for a different murder. My name is Nika Cohen, and I'm also an attorney on the Public Service Initiative team here at Squire Patton Boggs. The work we get to do, and I say get because we are so proud of and so grateful for our pro bono clients, taps into the firm's deep legal expertise and advocacy for the most vulnerable people caught up in one of the most punitive carceral systems in the world. From helping exonerate those who've been wrongfully convicted to supporting sentencing reform efforts, we strive to make a meaningful difference. After one of our recent resentencing victories in Louisiana, for example, it was an honor to be able to tell our client and his family that they will be reunited and together at Christmas before the end of 2024. Hi, I'm Coulter Paulson from SPB's Cincinnati office. We run the Sixth Circuit Clinic at two local law schools representing indigent clients on appeal. In 2023, we want a new trial based on a finding of bias for a judge's actions outside the courtroom. And students that argued before the Sixth Circuit in 2023 just want a published decision that should eliminate the rest of our client's sentence. Many of our students go on to do pro bono criminal appeals after law school. Steptoe is honored to be a 2024 Beacon of Justice Award recipient. We have a longstanding commitment to pro bono work that increases equal access to justice and advances civil and human rights. Over the last year, we engaged in pro bono work to address civil and human rights in a wide variety of cases. This includes representing clients on death row, representing clients sentenced as juveniles who are now seeking a second chance, helping to advance the human rights of LGBTQ plus individuals in Uganda, and representing Afghan refugees. For example, in 2023, Steptoe represented two large Afghan families. They were evacuated from Afghanistan after facing death threats and torture at the hands of the Taliban. The families were brought to the U.S. to testify against al-Qaeda persecutors. Our team rep provided comprehensive advocacy for all of the family members in seeking asylum and assisted with their employment and social service challenges. In 2023, Steptoe also submitted comments on behalf of our client, the client the Council for Global Equality, arguing that the Biden administration should withdraw all trade preference benefits for Uganda due to their recently enacted law criminalizing LGBTQ plus individuals in gross violation of internationally recognized human rights. In November 2023, the Biden administration agreed and removed Uganda's preferential status under trade law. In addition, Steptoe is committed to representing clients on death row and clients in prison seeking meaningful second chances. Oftentimes our clients were juveniles at the time of incarceration and they did not receive adequate representation. We often find racial bias and constitutional errors play an unfortunate role in both their trials and sentencing, resulting in unreasonably long prison sentences. Most of our clients have already served decades in prison and have made great efforts to turn their lives around. As a result of our advocacy, working together with our clients, they are often released and given a second chance at life. They have the opportunity to return to their to their families and contribute to their communities. 
We are honored to receive this award and we have a strong commitment to continuing our pro bono work to advance civil and human rights well into the future. Thank you so much. I think civil and human rights are really important to protect because they're kind of the building blocks of our society. People who can't otherwise afford legal representation are often at a severe disadvantage in the justice system. If we are going to be defenders of the law, we have to be defenders for everyone. And prisoner civil rights, you are defending some of the most vulnerable and frankly, some of the most forgotten of our population. I was drawn to pro bono work that focuses on civil and human rights because there really is no greater feeling than helping someone in need. Everyone deserves to be treated uh, properly and on the basis of their identity. People who come to the Innocence Project have nowhere else to turn. They have often not had competent legal representation and have been convicted of terrible crimes that they did not commit and are now serving very long prison sentences. Being a small part of the team that works to address these injustices is incredibly rewarding. I had the privilege of representing our courageous client during his more than six year effort to obtain asylum. Ultimately, we were able to get his case remanded and following an evidentiary hearing in front of the IJ here in Atlanta, we were able to get him asylum granted in January of 2021. It's been very important to me to help members of the trans community uh, have a name that reflects who they are. Uh, and helps them move through the world in a easier way. It is some of the most rewarding work that you will do. We are honored that Wiley has been chosen as a recipient of the Beacon of Justice Award, and we are grateful to NLADA for this recognition. We have a strong tradition of service to the local and global community, and we are especially proud of our commitment to civil and human rights. Some highlights of our work over the past year include representing an Afghan family seeking asylum in the United States, advocating on behalf of unaccompanied immigrant children, being subjected to unlawful and inhumane treatment at the Shenandoah Valley Juvenile Center, defending the constitutional rights of almost 1,200 incarcerated individuals at the Fluvanna Correctional Center for Women, and representing individuals who are sentenced to life in prison for acts committed as minors, advocating for reduced sentences. These matters echo Wiley's pro bono mission, which seeks to provide equal access to the justice system for individuals and groups otherwise unable to afford it. Though all pro bono work is important, our success in these civil and human rights matters truly impacts the daily lives and wellness of our pro bono clients. From advocating for refugees to defending the constitutional rights of children, Wiley strives to serve in the areas where we can make the most impact. Hello, everyone. Wilson Sonsini is honored to receive the Beacon of Justice Award for 2024 to be recognized by the National Legal Aid and Defender Association, NLADA, for our civil and human rights pro bono work. Equality and access to justice are bedrock principles of our firm that we strive to honor every day. This recognition is particularly meaningful to us given the outstanding work of our fellow awardees, as well as NLADA's distinguished legacy as America's oldest and largest nonprofit association devoted to excellence in the delivery of legal services to those in need. NLADA is a true pioneer and leader in the access to justice movement. For us, a few examples of our most recent work include multiple ongoing civil rights lawsuits, including challenging discriminatory policing, standing up for human rights and torture victim and protection act litigation and our most recent case filed right here in washington dc alleging that the usda has historically discriminated against and continues to discriminate against black farmers in obtaining vital federal loans we are proud to stand shoulder to shoulder with our awesome clients in pursuit of justice and equality we're also grateful to represent brave survivors of trafficking in pursuit of freedom and opportunity as well as our numerous immigration clients 
For example, in 2023 alone, we obtained 12 separate asylum grants, including for four very brave young women from Afghanistan who are now living free and pursuing their dreams in the United States. Our community impact program also extends far beyond litigation and immigration. We also support dozens of nonprofit and social enterprise entities de dedicated to pursuit of equality and human rights. And we further demonstrate our commitment to these values and community service work throughout the firm, ranging from numerous food sort and donation initiatives to supporting survivors and families in need. And by the donations of the Wilson Sun Senior Foundation, our unique separate 501c3 funded by the partners of the firm. In sum, these are the bedrocks of our firm culture, and we're so thankful to NLADA for the recognition of not only our firm, but all of the great endeavors in pursuit of justice and equality by the awardees we celebrate here with today. It's so great to be with you, and thank you so much. At Yetter Coleman, we believe public service is a fundamental aspect of legal practice, and since our founding, it has been essential to our firm's work and values. Our attorneys share a moral and social responsibility to address legal inequalities. For nearly 15 years, we've been at the forefront of reforming the broken Texas foster care system, outlasting 10 commissioners and two state agencies, and dedicating over 16,000 pro bono hours towards systemic change that will protect thousands of children. We support organizations determined to make the world a safer place, most recently with our amicus brief for the Houston Area Women's Center in U.S. versus Rahimi, a landmark case seeking to uphold a federal law prohibiting domestic abusers from possessing firearms while subject to a domestic violence restraining order. Our pro bono work champions the rights of all people, regardless of nationality. We've assisted high-risk immigration cases, including ensuring young immigrants like a 13-year-old girl from El Salvador find safety and legal protection in the United States. We're also deeply involved in habeas cases, upholding the rights of the accused and ensuring due process is guaranteed to everyone. We partner with organizations nationwide, providing essential legal services to underserved communities. We advocate for those in pain, ensuring they receive access to essential medications without discrimination or fear of employer retaliation. At Yetter Coleman, it is our privilege and our culture to give back in ways that benefit the lives of our most vulnerable populations while strengthening communities nationwide. We are deeply honored to receive the 2024 Beacon of Justice Award. Yetter Coleman. My name is Maggie O'Donnell, and I serve as co-chair of Zuckerman Spader's pro bono program. On behalf of the firm, I'm thrilled to thank NLADA for awarding us with the Beacon of Justice Award for 2024 for our work in human rights and civil rights. Every day, lawyers, staff, and others at this firm work on pro bono matters, where we help on immigrant detention cases, other civil rights work, housing fairness. We want to be thankful to people like Nick DiCarlo, an associate at our firm who gained an important victory in the Fourth Circuit on behalf of immigrant rights. Thank you, Maggie. We at Zuckerman Spader represent four immigrant families who lost their homes in a mobile home park in Virginia due to a discriminatory policy that required them to show proof of legal immigration status. We challenged the policy saying that it violated the Fair Housing Act by causing an unlawful disparate impact against Latinos. Even though the defendant landlords had no proof and no evidence justifying their discriminatory policy, the district court ruled for the landlords. We worked with our clients to appeal that ruling and won a, a tremendous victory in the Fourth Circuit. I was honored to, uh, to argue that appeal in front of the Fourth Circuit which provided a precedential decision that will uh, be meaningful both for our clients and for immigrants and tenants nationwide. Zuckerman Spader is proud to work on these types of complex and important pro bono matters and is grateful to be part of this event as the part of the pro bono community. Congratulations to the winners of the 2024 Beacon of Justice Awards. Your tireless efforts to uphold civil and human rights inspire us all.